Hi there, readers of Holly's blog. I'm Sarah Zar, and this is the story behind the story of my latest young adult novel, Once Was Lost. Here in Salt Lake City, where I live, in June of 2002, a teenage girl, I think she was 15, uh, named Elizabeth Smart was kidnapped. If you're my age, you definitely would remember it. Sometimes when I'm talking to high school classes, it's uh, they have kind of a hazy familiarity with the case because um, they were like six or seven when this happened but summer 2002 was not the best for me um, I had fired my first agent and been laid off of a really well-paying job that I loved the economy was pretty much in the crapper um, I don't know if it was as bad as it is now, but it felt worse because the reason for it really was 9-11, so as a country we were still depressed about that and figuring out how to move forward and what that meant and trying to figure out why this had happened. At the time that Elizabeth Smart was kidnapped, I was working as a church secretary at a old church in my neighborhood. We were really broke and I didn't have a car and um, I would walk to work and during the time she was missing people began to hang blue ribbons. The way that people hang yellow ribbons to signify you know that someone is off fighting a war um, and these blue ribbons were a symbol to the community that someone that matters to this community is missing and life won't be the same until she returns. As the summer kind of went on I would walk to work and I would see the blue ribbons and I found myself having these really cynical hopeless thoughts like people just need to take those ribbons down I'm sure she's dead this is pointless you know um, and I started asking myself why would I think that? As a person who claims to believe in a faith that is based on miracles and impossible things happening, why would I be so quick to believe that this situation was hopeless? Just, you know, how, how do you know when to give up hope? Can you ever really say, can you ever really say about a given situation or relationship that it's too late? So I started writing this story about a small community where a girl had been kidnapped and at the time it was an adult novel from multiple points of view uh, the different narrators all kind of had a peripheral connection to the missing girl and, and in the previous version of the novel one of the narrators had been a teenage daughter of a pastor and I think that part of it came into the story just because I was working at a church at the time and I kind of had church life and pastor's families and um, just the difficulties of being kind of in a fishbowl on my mind a lot. And so as I reshaped it into a young adult novel, it became, you know, the story of this pastor's daughter, Samara, who is seeing this kidnapping of a girl she sort of knows who goes to her church. We're seeing that through her eyes and at the same time She's already kind of been having a crisis of faith. The napping sort of exacerbates those questions that she has. I think in light of what's going on with her family, what's going on with her mother and her mother's drinking and her father's kind of inability to really be present to family life, and then the kidnapping on top of it, I think Sam just really feels abandoned by God. And I think whether or not you have a religious faith, that's kind of a universal feeling of um, what are we doing here <laughs> and who's in charge and if there's this all-powerful being why can't he or why doesn't he stop these things from happening why doesn't he just come down and fix things kind of a lot to think about <laughs> in terms of a novel and telling a story and um, trying to add complexity of those questions at the same but at the same time keep the story moving along at a nice pace and so the kidnapping kind of provides the structure for the book. And um, I remembered a lot of details about the time when Elizabeth Smart was missing and the search volunteers going door to door. And there's one scene in the book where 
Sam is with some of her friends from youth group helping on the search, and one of the things they're supposed to do is call out the missing girl's name and look for her in garbage cans, in yards. Um, and I remember very vividly when Elizabeth Smart was missing, volunteer searchers coming to my house. Can we search your front and back yards? I said, sure. And I, I was kind of standing on the porch, and um, they were calling her name, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Smart. And then I heard the sound of the garbage can lid dropping, and it just struck me um, in a really emotional way. They're looking for this girl in garbage cans, you know. Um, it seemed more profoundly sad to me than anything else during that time. A year later, 2003, still nothing had happened with my writing career. I was still working at the church. I was having a hard time with all the questions I had about God, about my life, about being a writer, if that was going to work out for me. I had been writing for seven or eight years and nothing really had happened yet and just feeling a lot of hopelessness about the future. And I was in my neighborhood grocery store and uh, I was walking fast to get my shopping done and I came around a corner near the freezer section, I still remember, it was right by the ice cream, <laughs> and I just almost ran physically right into Elizabeth Smart and her mother, and they were there shopping. Because a few months earlier, Elizabeth Smart had been found alive, and despite some truly horrible things that had happened to her, she was relatively well. And I said, oh, excuse me, and got out of their way, and they moved on, and I went on, and I kind of, I tried not to stare, you know, because she'd been through enough, but um, I watched her go through the store. I watched them get in line and just thought, she's so alive and she's so beautiful. And it was really the closest thing to a miracle that I had personally witnessed. I think even if you don't have a religious faith, the term crisis of faith can be applied and understood a lot of different ways. You know, adolescence, there's kind of a transition point of you have a certain kind of faith in your family, in your parents, in their ability to provide you not just with food, clothing, and shelter, but comfort and wisdom and guidance. And if somehow they falter at, at that job, you know, you can kind of lose faith in them or at least in your vision of what they were, and that has to change as you grow. And I think that's really similar for religion. Like, if you grow up with faith, you have a childlike understanding of it, and then either in adolescence or young adulthood, you kind of have to, like, figure out how that faith is going to grow and change as you grow and change, and what can you hold on to that's important to you, and what are things that you have to kind of um, reshape your thinking about. Well, and for Sam in this book, as she sees witnesses, you know, the aftermath of this crime, just faith in the basic goodness of people and the fundamental safety of the world. When I'm asked what I want readers to get out of a book, I always say I just want them to have a great reading experience, to be fully absorbed by the book and to get to the end of it and think, wow, that was a great read. Um, and I think there's more in the book to be gotten if the reader wants to do that and depending on what their experiences are and their thoughts on these different issues. I feel like my number one job is to make it a great read and I hope I've done that with Once Was Lost.